What is going on guys, this is Johnny of Hushpin10 YouTube and welcome back to another video in the Android Studio App Development Tutorials guys. And I know I haven't really done a video of these uh, for, I know, quite a long time. Um, the last video I did was actually code optimization and I wouldn't really count that as a regular video. Um, so guys, I'm really sorry for not uploading any of these videos, but I actually felt like, you know, I didn't really want to continue with this series anymore. It wasn't fun for me anymore. But guess what? I started to lay out the code for this tutorial and I realized, well, this is actually a lot of fun. So here I am guys making another Android Studio App Development tutorial. Freaking long name, I hate it. Um, and yeah guys, long waited. <laughs> so let's do this. Alright, so first off I updated my Android Studio, so now it's at 0.5.8 I think. So I don't know when the final version is going to come out, but hopefully that's going to be this year. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Alright, so we're back in our app, looking at all the code. Alright, so right now, what I want to do actually is um, I want to show you something. Right now, I'm just going to open the app real quick. Alright, so now as you can see, we are in our app right here, so maybe I can make this a little bigger. Um, and now if you go to our list, um, I actually added a bunch of different contacts right here. Um, I don't know, just some random contacts and as you can see we can scro scroll it and everything. If we click on a contact, now it's happening and as you can see that kind of grey square um, is just kind of a little weird um, so it's not going to the end and our contact information is hidden right here. So that's kind of weird. So that's the first thing I'm going to change right now. And you've probably read it in the title already, but um, today we're going to be talking about actually deleting contacts. So that's something that you guys wanted me to show you. And we're also going to be laying out kind of the first part of editing contacts, um, but that will require another layout which we're going to create in the next tutorial. Alright, so right now we just want to go to our um, layout and we want to go to the list view item right now so you can this this is our list view item and we don't actually have to change anything about our code here so as you can see we got two linear layouts right here one which is a horizontal linear layout which basically um, holds our IV contact image and one linear layout which holds all the other elements so the contact name the phone etc so what we want to do right now, in our linear layout, the horizontal one right now, you will see that our layout height is set to full parent. Now that is the problem we are having. This is set to full parent and you know all the other items are set to full parent as well, so it kind of can't render that properly. So what we want to do, we want to change this to wrap content right here. Alright, so now we're wrapping in content and we want to do the exact same thing for this linear layout. So layout height is going to be wrap content. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go to our main activity and what we're going to change is actually in our list view. So we're going to go to our oops, to our tab contact list, we're going to expand that and we're going to see our tax, uh, our list view right here. Now as you can see, the layout width is set to wrap content and that's something we don't want either. So what we're going to do, we're going to change this to full parent and we're also going to change the height to full parent. So that's actually pretty good because it doesn't have to do a bunch of computing. So to see like what's the content and then calculate how uh, like how high or how big is, uh, our um, list view is going to be. That's very good for the performance of our app as well. All right. So now we're done with that, um, our list view is going to look way better. But I'm not going to show this right now, we're going to see that at the very end. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to be adding a variable up here. Because what we want to do, we want to basically get a, um, show a context menu, which basically has a bunch of different options like edit contact and delete contact. And to show that, we need to get the index of the item that is long clicked. That sounds a little weird, but what you will basically be able to do, you will be able to long click this item, so basically hold uh, your finger onto this item, and then it's basically there's going to be a menu popping up which says, okay, what you want to do with this contact, maybe edit it, maybe delete it, and so on. So we're going to create an integer, and we're going to be calling this long clicked item index. Really weird name, I know, but it's going to do. 
And then one thing we also have to change, we have to add an our array adapter which we are creating in our populate list method which we have right here and we basically want to make this a global variable up there as well because we want to make sure that we can access a certain method of our ad of, of our adapter um, to make sure that all the content is always displayed so all the content of our list of contacts okay so we're going to be creating the array adapter and the type is going to be a contact and we're going to be calling this contact adapter. Good. All right. So now we're going to go to our populate list method and actually initialize that variable. So right here we're going to change this to contact adapter equals to a new contact list adapter. And now of course we need to change the set adapter method. So basically the um, argument we pass through to contact ad uh, contact adapter. Okay. All right. Now we are set, and now we can access our contact adapter um, everywhere within our class. So, okay, that's pretty cool. So now one thing we want to add is actually we want to register for the context menu. So the context menu is, you're going to see that uh, at the end, but this is basically just a menu. And to use that menu, we have to register that, okay? That's kind of a thing. So we're actually going to re register this for our, where is it, for our list view. So whenever we long click an item, it's automatically going to show that context menu. I don't really know how that registering thing works because it just shows that when you uh, long click the item. I don't know if you, if you want to implement something like just clicking an item. I don't know how that would like be different, but it kind of auto detects that you just want to have a long item click. Um, so I, I think you have to add that manually somehow if you want just, you know, to click the item. Um, okay. So now let's find our contact list view. And now what we're going to do, contact list view dot set on long click listener. No, on item long click listener. Here we go. <laughs> I know, pretty long name. Uh, that wasn't what I was talking about at all. I'm sorry. All right, because we want to do the registering. So we're going to do register for context menu, and we're going to refer a view. And as you know, that everything in our yeah, everything you can add to the layout is basically inheriting from the view class. So all we have to do to um, use you know pass through an argument, we just have to refer to the contact list view. Simple as that. All right. Okay, because I was very confused, I already added this next thing we're going to do. Because we're going to add this on item long click listener. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm really confused. Um, so what we're going to do, we're just going to use the set on item on item long click listener, and we're going to be doing new on item long click listener. Now you can see we got that popping up in our auto suggestions. So now we can just hit enter, and it's going to add that for us. Okay. Good. So now what we're going to do, we're basically just going to assign a value to our long clicked item index up here. So we're gonna do long clicked Yeah, that should work. Oh, I spelt that wrong. <laughs> oh damn it. This was actually happening the last time as well. So long clicked item long clicked item index. And we're gonna do long clicked item index equals to position. Because the position basically tells us where in our list view the item was clicked, or which item was clicked in our list view, and then it's going to get the, that position. Now, we already know that the position of which that um, method passes us um, is the same as the position of the item in our contact list. So that's pretty handy. That's exactly why we created this variable up here. Okay. So now another thing we have to change, and that's something I mentioned just you know some minutes ago, um, was that we have to kind of notify our adapter that the content of our list has changed. So whenever we add a content, we also need to notify our uh, da -da -da, array adapter up here. Okay, so I actually said in a previous tutorial so that it detects that automatically whenever something is added, but I was saying that for no reason whatsoever. So my reason was why I said that was basically because whenever we 
added a contact and clicked on that list tab right here, it was automatically add that to the list. Now, I think that was it was just doing that the first time, because it basically, whenever you click on this tab thing, it draws the entire list, so it technically um, retrieves the values just whenever you click this list tab. So that was what's happening, and that was kind of why this misconception occurred. Um, anyways, uh, da -da -da -da. so after our contacts dot add, and we're adding the contact to the list, we want to notify our adapter that the list content has changed. So technically, we just added that. So what we're going to need to do, we're going to refer to the contact adapter, and then we're going to use the notify dataset changed method. Here we go. Here it is. So contact data dot notify dataset changed. So that's going to do. That's also going to be a method we're going to be using in, yeah, a method we're going to create in second. All right. So now we're pretty much set, and now we need to create our context menu. To do that, we're going to need to add a method like onCreate up here, which is automatically called by our Android system, I guess you could say. So right above our private boolean contact exists, we're going to add this method. And this method is going to be a public void, and it's going to be called onCreate context menu. That's a set name, okay? So don't mess with the name or anything. It's really important. Uh, it's basically like the on create method. All right. So now this takes a few arguments, which is context menu, and now we need to import this. And I'm basically going to call this menu, and then a view. I'm just going to call this view, and then context menu info, and I'm going to call this menu info. Here we go. Okay. Now this needs to be imported as well, but it's automatically at the context menu dot context menu info because we're not going to be using that anymore. All right. So now we're gonna refer to the superclass and call it the exact same method because we want, you know, the superclass to do all of the operations it does by itself. But we also want to add our own little things to it. So we're gonna pass through menu, the view, and the menu info. So basically, just the same parameters. Okay. So now we're actually going to create the menu. Now to do that, we can refer to this context menu right here, which is passed through. Um, yeah, which is passed through. <laughs> and to add items to that, we're going to need to use the add method. But before we get to that, we want to set a title and an icon. Now to add an icon, we can download an icon, okay? And to do that, I usually use this website called Icon Archive because it's really, really handy. It has a lot of icons. So just go to iconarchive.com and in this search bar type in edit, hit enter, and then you should get uh, some results. So I'm just going to use this icon right here. Just click on that. Don't actually click on like icon or PNG or anything. Click on the icon which is displayed and then you can choose a size. So I'm probably going to go with 48 pixels. Just click on that and click on save image as. And now we need to save this, and I'm just going to save this to the desktop. Now, one thing which is very important is actually that you have to rename this because um, there must be, uh, I think, uh, capitalized letters. So you have to change this to a lowercase p, and you can only use underscores. Okay, so pencil icon dot png. So no hyphens are allowed. Okay, now it's safe, and I downloaded that, which is fine. And now I'm going to go to my desktop and actually move this icon to the folder. So go to Android Studio, drag this into the drawable folder. And yeah, hit OK. And I also want to add this to GitHub. That was actually the previous video I did on uh, Android Studio stuff. Um, I was actually, you know, adding GitHub integration, which is also a pretty cool video. So if you want to check that out, you can. Um, da -da -da, let me find the method. Okay, here we go. So now we can use the set header icon method. And now we can pass through the ID of the drawable. So that would be r.drawable.pencil icon. Perfect. Alright, and now we're going to set a title. So menu.set header title. And that's just going to be contact. I don't know, maybe contact options or something? I really don't know. 
you can come up with a better name if you want. I'm terrible with naming these things, so <laughs> don't even worry about that. Now we're going to use the add method, and that's actually the method which is going to add the menu items to the context menu. So the first argument we're going to refer to menu dot none. You can take a look at the arguments list. It's re wait, I can show you the arguments list, I think. Yeah, as you can see. So first it's going to be the group ID, and we don't want a group ID, so that's really not important. Now you can see we have to specify our own item ID. Now that does differ from the ID which is automatically assigned to the buttons or whatever we drag into our layout. So that's actually those are IDs which are randomly gen no, no, it's not random, uh, but it's pretty close. So those are a bunch of different IDs and they do have a certain value and we're just referring to this by its string name basically. But yeah, it's it's really weird. Alright, so now what we're gonna do let me just let me just find it again. Um we're gonna go up here and we're going to be creating some integers which are basically representing the ID. So that's common practice. That's what you would want to do. Then we could add like hard code these numbers like 0 1 and then we could add a switch ca uh, switch statement and then check for 0 and 1 because we know what the item is but it's common practice to declare variables up here which basically represent the ID of the um menu item so we're going to do a private static final integer i don't know if you can use static maybe not i don't know and now we're going to call this uh the first one the first one we're going to add is actually edit. So, edit. Yeah, it's just going to be edit, and that's going to equal to zero. And actually, going to do comma, and then the next one is going to be delete. We're just going to equal to one. Okay. Great. So now we're going to go back to our method, and we're going to add the edit right now. Oh no. Oh yeah. <laughs> we are. So as you can see, we're already preparing our context menu or our app to deal with editing context later on. Alright, so now we specified the ID, which is zero. Um, and now we just need... Oh no, now that's... Wait, let me check the arguments again. Yeah, that's the order. It doesn't need to be in any order, so we can just use the exact same... Yeah, just use menu.none. And then we can finally pass through the title of the item, so... <coughs> ah, excuse me. And that would be edit contact. And now we can just copy this method. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Ah, damn it. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll duplicate it. And now we can just change the ID to delete. Here we go. And now we can change this to delete contact. Great. Okay. Alright, so now we're done with this method right here. But that's just kind of the beginning because now we can do uh we're gonna add the the on context item selected method, which is the main method we're going to need. So that basically gets uh the item which is selected. <laughs> Pretty simple. Alright, so this is gonna be another public but not avoid this time, it's gonna be public boolean and it's gonna be called on context item selected. On context item selected and argument is menu item and we're gonna call this oh yeah, imported of course. I'm just gonna call this item. Sorry, <laughs> I'm used to C sharp, so sorry for adding that query bracket there. <laughs> okay. Um and now we're going to add a switch statement as already as I already mentioned. So <coughs> <coughs> Ah, excuse me. Oh damn it. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit sick actually. So item dot get item ID, and that's exactly what we're going to switch. So the first case would be edit, and all I'm going to do for now is just add a little to do. Ah, oh, Burrell, damn it! <laughs> I'm sorry. So to do, uh, implement, damn it, implement editing a contact. Simple. <laughs> And the next case statement is, of course, going to be for our delete item ID. Okay, and now add another break, and we're good. All right, now <clears throat> what I want to no, I don't want to check for anything. We just because we are very sure that this 
is assigned. So, wait, let me check. Uh, that our contact adapter is assigned and our long clicked item index is assigned. Why are we so sure of that? Well, simply because in our on create method, we are calling the populate list method. And that's automatically. Um, that's all automatically assigned then, because in our populate me uh, list method we are assigning this adapter, so we can be very sure that this is already assigned whenever we, you know, click a menu item. And we are also sure that this um, blah, 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 this event is triggered, so we are also sure that this long clicked item index variable is assigned as well, which is good. So we can just add our the things we want to do. So, the first thing we want to do is to, of course, delete the contact from the database. So, to do that, we're going to use dbhandler.deleteContact. That's the method we made a few tutorials ago. And now we're going to do contacts.get. And now we're going to use our long clicked item index variable we created. Just so we know which contact was clicked, and we're going to delete exactly that contact. But we also need to remove it from the list because, of course, our database handler isn't in any way connected to the list we have in our class here, in our main activity. So, contacts dot uh, remove, of course, and then we have to pass through the location as well, so it's just going to be long clicked item index as well. Good. <clears throat> and now one last thing is something we already did in our onCreate method, in our, I don't know, thingy we created. And that is, of course, notifying our adapter that the dataset has changed. So, contact adapter dot notify dataset changed. All right. And now what we want to return here is actually we're going to refer to the super class method, so to the original one, which is going to be on context item selected. So we have that right here and pass through the item. And now we are good to go. Great. So that's everything um, for today guys and now you can take a look at our app and how it's working alright so now we are in our contact manager app again and if you open our list then you can see all the different contacts I created you know just the name and for some reason this isn't properly displayed I really don't know why right now Okay, anyways, so now you can see whenever we long click that item, we can see our icon right here and we can see our title, so contact options, and now we have the option to edit the contact but also to delete the contact, which is just what we want. So hit delete contact. Now you can see that this contact has been deleted. Now if you want to delete George, we can do that as well. So now it deleted George, and of course we can create contacts. So something like, I don't know, someone. <laughs> You don't know right now. At the contact, someone has been added to a contact. Now you can see someone right here, but still we can delete Olaf. Okay, so this is already about it. In the next tutorial, we're going to fix this because apparently it didn't work. It, it worked when I tested it, which is very odd. But yeah, that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial, just you know, right at the beginning so we can get rid of that. Um, and then we're going to deal with deleting contacts, which is also a lot of fun. So you guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, again, I mentioned that in my C-Sharp tutorial. Thank you so much for 6,000 subscribers, guys. It's amazing how you guys support me. Thank you so, so much. Um, if you enjoyed the content of this video, then please give it a thumbs up, because it really supports me, guys. And yeah, see you in another tutorial. Bye.